Naming organization non-descriptive names also no hierarchy. For this test, it's seeing if you have a hierarchy, which means is your model capable of being moved all at once, whether it's being grouped or if it's under a node such as a locator. So if we check this model for let's see no hierarchy, the test is true. So if we go into the outliner, we can see that all of the objects are separate and you can easily fix this by selecting all control G and then we group it and then you have to make sure it's a descriptive name and if we run the test again it's false this test also is checking to see if um, the objects are named descriptively you can't leave it as cube 1, sphere 2, etc but you also can't change the names to something like boat piece 1 through boat piece 52 they have to describe what the object is accurately so if we looked at this you can see it's torso, back sword, legs, etc so these are named descriptively history clear you can have no history on your objects. You can fix this by going to edit, delete by type, history. So let's go to this model. So if you do something like move it and go to construction history test, you can see that is true. So you would have to go to edit, delete by type, and history. And something that is quirky about the Maya script is that if no matter what you do, if you run the script more than once, the history will always be false. So to get an accurate reading, you have to save it and open it again. So you can only get an accurate reading of your history test if you run it once. So let's run it again and the construction is false so let's see if we move it this way and we know there's history on it let's run it and it's false so that's how you can see that once you run it twice it'll give you an inaccurate reading so you have to save it and open it again Make sure that you delete your history and your and freeze your transformations when you're before you start rigging also. No extra elements present in renders whether it is a background plane or a random cube or another model if it's not in the preview images it shouldn't be in the scene. But even if you have, oh, let's this. So even if you have a plane, and you have it under your model it's not really necessary for it to be in the scene so you can just delete it objects with no or default material your model should have at least one material that what represents what the object is you can't submit something like a gray head you should make the color of the skin some type of flesh tone and you should make the eyeballs white and the iris another color this is more than one material, but you want to represent your model well. Apply this concept to whatever your model is. Textures, materials included. This checks to see if there are any missing textures or materials. A quick tidbit, make sure that your images all have English characters in them. Foreign characters can cause problems. Uh, failing this test can be caused by absolute texture paths, so you would want to change them to relative texture paths. Texture zip with the model. 
This is a manual test to make sure all textures are in the folder. Textures named descriptively. This checks to see if your texture nodes are named descriptively. Not file 1, file 2, not texture 1, texture 2. Names that describe the texture. And when you go into Maya, let's go to the hypershade. And these are the textures. So these are not named descriptively. They would have to be changed. Materials named descriptively. This checks to see if your material nodes are named descriptively, not Lambert 1 or Blend 2. Something that describes the object it's on or whatever it looks like. So let's go back to Maya and the materials tabs these are not the default names but these are also not descriptive enough so these would have to be changed also UV quality no stretching no obvious seams no flipped or overlapping stacked UVs a lot of times this test may fail unless you perfectly UV map your model and it's all non overlapping there's no UVs on top of each other just make sure that in your full preview page, whatever is in the program matches up with what you have in your full preview page, whether that be mixed, non-overlapping, overlapping, or whatever selection you choose. Well, that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any clarifying questions, please put those in the comments. And please check out 3dgumshoe.com. Take care.